Today's video is actually going to be a setup video. So I'm going to actually to use my NX10 and this uh, setup procedure is actually the same on the NX6, NX8 and NX10. And for demonstration purposes I will actually using my FMS uh, 800mm Zero. So this one does feature a, um, a Spectrum 637T inside. And the setup procedure for the 630, the 631 and the, and the 637T is just exactly the same. Uh, and I will show you actually how to set up all the channels, uh, how to um, set up the, the gain channel for the AS3X and also the flight mode channel which controls safe on and off. So let's jump into the TX then and look at the basic settings for, for the setup. Here we have the NX10 and I will just show you what I actually do on the display for this one. So we're going to do a clean installation uh, from um, the NX series using then the AR637T as an example and do forward programming. Uh, so first off let's just create a new model. So we go into uh, the menu system and scroll down to system setup and we select yes. We go into model select and we just scroll down to uh, select add new model and we just, um, this is the uh, type which you select over here, so this is an airplane, helicopter, glider and drone. Uh, so let's just start with the, an airplane, with the, <laughs> the series an airplane and click create. So the navigation is actually done by this scroll wheel and to select you press, press it. So now we actually have a clean setup, so we go into model type then. Um, we already did this, but by doing this one more time, we're actually resetting everything. So now everything is just reset, uh, so we have a clean, uh, fresh start. And then we're going to, into model name, where we name this one. So press this one, and uh, by default it says acro. We're going to uh, just change this for this uh, demonstration to zero. So I'm scrolling I have zero. And to save this name, you actually just press the back, back button and then you go into this menu again. Then you have aircraft type, the next um, uh, setup. So for aircraft type, we actually go to wing and it says normal. We can certainly scroll through uh, all these settings. But normal is actually uh, ailerons on the wing. So let's just select uh, normal uh, and next and we can just exit this one by going back one more. So actually what we've done now uh, is we have uh, selected all the, the basic functions for a model. By default then, if you go into channel design, uh, the spectrum system uh, um, is configured by default uh, like the uh, channel 1 is throttle, and channel 2 is aileron, channel 3 is elevator, channel 4 is rudder, channel 5 is gear, and on this NX10 I actually have uh, 10 channels. So let's go uh, back then. Uh, and now is the process of actually binding the, the airplane to the TX. So by binding you uh, go into bind and you click yes and then you select bind. But first we're going to look at what has to be done on the uh, airplane itself. Here's the inside then of my FMS Zero. So the AR637T receiver is actually mounted on, on one of the high sides. Uh, and what's important is actually uh, the connectors either have to face straight to the rear or straight to the front uh, for the gyro to work. But then it doesn't matter if it's like me, it's mounted on the high side or if I have it laying down or upside down or on the, on the other side. But the, it has to be you know, kind of straight mounted like this and the connectors either straight facing forward or straight to the back. And uh, as the, the channel assignment then, which I show you on the TX, was channel 1 uh, uh, the throttle, channel 2 aileron, channel 3 elevator and channel 4 rudder. Uh, I've already connected all the connectors according to this, to the uh, channel 1 to, to 4 on this, uh, on this one. So the next step then is actually to, to bind the receiver to the TX. And when I'm doing this, uh, I actually have to first to connect this uh, battery lead. And then uh, the bind button is actually uh, 
over here on the front part of the receiver. So I'm pressing this one for a few seconds. Then you can see that it actually starts flashing. So when, the, uh, when it's actually bound, this one will have a solid light. But right now it's actually waiting for the bind process to finish. So on the TX then, we're actually back on the menu page. So just uh, if we have um, exit this one, just go into bind again. Select bind and select yes and select bind. So now it's actually binding to the receiver. So when you actually bound the TX to your receiver, the first thing you have to do is to check all the channels. So the uh, actually the movement of all the channels goes in the right, right direction. So that's actually crucial because uh, if you don't do it, uh, the next step with setting up the gyro won't work. So uh, let's just check everything on this one. So here's my zero then. So I have to check that everything is just set up the right way with all the channels, they're moving in the right direction. So uh, on my NX10 then, if I move the aileron stick to the left, this one should actually go up. But when I'm moving this to the left, you can actually see that this one moves down. So I have to fix this. So it's pretty easy. I go into the menu and then I select um, on the server setup. I go into this one. I, I scroll to, to this one, press it. Go into reverse and scroll to ailerons and just press it once. So if I exit this one now and I push this one to the left, you can actually see that this one is moving up. So it's the right uh, direction right now. So let's uh, check all the other surfaces. So we have actually the um, elevator for instance. So here's the elevator. So let's just um, check it when I'm moving this stick uh, up. You can actually see that this also goes in the wrong direction. So that's actually a down elevator, but I'm actually pressing up elevator. So this also has to be fixed. So uh, once more, I'm actually going into the, the screen then. Server setup, do uh, the reverse and then go to elevator and do a reverse on this channel as well. So let's try it again. You can see that actually now the, this one is actually moving in the right direction. So it's going up, as you can see. Uh, so that's uh, that channel. So the last channel then to check is actually the rudder. We just place this one like this and we can actually check that the rudder is actually moving in the right direction. So when I'm pressing this one to the left, the rudder is actually going to the left. So it, it works just nice. Uh, the next step is actually to, to do a, a safety thing, I, I would say. So right now I can check the, uh, the throttle. By moving this one, you can actually see the, the proper spinning. But I always like to do a throttle cut first. So let's go into the menu. Let's go down to throttle cut. Uh, press this one and scroll to uh, which switch. So just by pressing this once, I can actually select which switch. So I'm just selecting this switch. Uh, and now it says switch H. So if I go back and I actually um, uh, enable the throttle cut by uh, having this uh, stick towards me. And if I move the, the throttle stick, the motor doesn't spin. And if I then switch this one to the rear position and I move the throttle stick, you can actually see that it works. So this is actually a, a super important safety feature to actually do on every RC plane because you, you don't want to you know, hurt your fingers or, or anything. And it's so easy to just uh, bump the throttle and, and having you know, some damage or, or if the plane just decides to you know, go off the table or whatever. So a throttle cut is really, really, really necessary. Uh, so then um, we go into doing the, um, the forward programming. Uh, so just press the menu and go down to forward programming. Uh, and it says connecting. So um, first off, let's go into gyro settings and first time setup. So it says uh, make sure the model has been configured, including wing type, reversing, travel, trimmed, etc. before continuing setup. And that's actually what, exactly what we did. Uh, so uh, we can just uh, select next. 
and then it says any wing type, channel assignment, subtrim or server reversing changes require running through initial setup again. So this is just a warning. So if I actually would change the server direction or anything, I actually have to do this setup procedure once more. So let's uh, proceed and uh, let's choose next. So it asks me to set the model level and press continue. So we, we have the, the zero actually level on our table. Uh, so I, I do go down to continue. And then it says set the model on its nose and press continue. Uh, so uh, I, I select continue and I put this one on the nose like this and I press continue. And right now I actually have a, a uh, graphic presentation on how the receiver is mounted. So we can actually see that the, uh, it's on its side and uh, on this end uh, are the, uh, the connectors. And this end is actually the bind button. So it's correct, uh, so it's orientation 4. So let's uh, just uh, select continue. Uh, and now I have to select the gain channel. The gain channel is actually this channel that, that controls uh, how much AS3X gain you have during flight. So uh, by pressing this one, I can actually choose which channel. And I, I'm not really sure, I don't think that the NX6 uh, has a, a, a rotating knob. I know that the NX8 and NX10, like this one, has this knob. So this might not work for the NX6, but on the NX8 and NX10 it surely works. So uh, I will just choose the channel then. Uh, and uh, I will uh, uh, go into this one, press this once, and go into uh, auxiliary 3. Uh, R knob, so just by uh, uh, selecting this one and go to next. So uh, just to enable everything I have to choose apply. So now the receiver is actually rebooting. And you hear the, the servers wiggle once, which actually means that you have AS3X enabled. So the next step then is actually to go into setup safe. So we go into forward programming once more, press this one. And we go into gyro settings uh, again. And first off, I'm actually going to go into system setup. And I'm, I'm going to go down to utilities. And on this option, uh, it's actually how many flight modes uh, are enabled. Uh, so, uh, by default, it actually has three flight modes. For safe select to work, you actually need only two. So, by pressing this one, I can actually uh, choose one, two, or three, or uh, more. But I will uh, just change this one to two flight modes. And then I will press the back button. So, and once more. And then I will go into first time uh, safe setup. So, just scroll down to this one. And it says before setting up safe, a flight mode channel must be configured. So the flight mode channel is actually the channel which controls safe uh, on and off. So let's go into the flight mode channel then and press this one. And, and uh, I have to press this wheel once and then actually select which of these channels. And for this one, uh, I can certainly choose uh, any of these, but uh, the channel 5 uh, is a good choice. So it says A and A is actually this switch. Um, so it's a, it's a nice, but you can certainly choose uh, other switches. But I, uh, as I've, uh, this one, H switch, is actually for the throttle cut. So the only two positions which left is actually this one. So let's just uh, select uh, gear and uh, switch A uh, and go into next. So now the actual flight model is uh, configured. So let's continue. And so select the desired flight mode switch position to adjust settings for each flight mode. So it's just a reminder that this switch actually uh, switches between the uh, different flight modes. So let's go into next. And it says that AS3X gains must be tuned and active in safe flight modes to help reduce wobble. Well, we already did the uh, AS3X uh, gain uh, setup, uh, so everything is just ready to go. So let's uh, choose next. 
And then it says level model and capture attitude. And the, uh, this one is actually really important also because uh, this tells uh, the gyro which attitude should the plane actually fly when you're, when you're in safe. So I think actually the, the, the default position of this one uh, on its landing wheels is okay. So I will go down to uh, level model and capture attitude and press this once. And what it does actually say now, this is just the, the, the pitch and roll <coughs> numbers uh, relative to the gyro position. So it's okay. Uh, so let's just uh, choose next. And here it actually says uh, flight mode one. And if I uh, press, um, if I switch this one, the A switch, then you can actually see that it, it does uh, switch between the flight mode two and flight mode one. So for instance, if I want to have flight mode one with safe enable, uh, I actually just uh, go down to safe mode, press this once and sele select self level angle. Uh, and while doing this, uh, and just if you can see, I'm actually switching on this switch. So when I have uh, flight number two, uh, safe is uh, uh, not active. And when I switch to flight no mode number one, it's active. So let's go down and just press next and apply. So now the receiver will actually reboot. And as you heard, there were actually two wiggles. So one was for the AS3X enable and the other one was for safe. Um, now you can actually just go back and everything is set up uh, as you want it. So it's a really nice and, and simple way to do it. Um, uh, and when you've done it a few times, I, I think it's just super easy to do it. Uh, so that's the, the way you do it on the FMS uh, Zero then. To check that everything is working then, I actually have uh, the A switch in the safe position, which is towards the back. And if I uh, then turn this one upside down, you can hear the ailerons is trying to correct it to level flight. Uh, and if I this, uh, flip this one off then, so it's only in AS3X mode, I can actually hear the servos. So they try to compensate and AS3X uh, only really uh, uh, corrects for, for wind gusts. If you have the wind uh, influence doors open which it kicks it a bit, uh, AS3X will actually make it smoother. And by having uh, uh, the adjustment gain on the R knob you can actually uh, turn the, it all the way down and then you have AS3, AS3X uh, all turned off and you can turn it uh, all the way up and then you have full AS3X and uh, by having it on the R knob you actually can uh, fine tune it during flight so if you experience some sort of oscillation if the gains are set too high you can just use the R knob and, and tone it down so it's a really nice feature to actually have it on the R knob and the R knob is not available on the NX6 so keep that in mind uh, I mean but this is just a, a to me at least a kind of quick way, it takes maybe five minutes to do everything uh, if you want to set up these receivers with the NX system.